Hello everyone, live. We go live. I'm just gonna turn down my music here. Playing some Led Zeppelin. All right, so we're just gonna give it a few minutes, guys. Uh, I'm gonna get people logged in. And we're gonna get started here. Rob and Brandon are probably gonna join us today, which is gonna be good. So we're talking about sciatica today. Sorry that I'm looking down at my computer here, but we'll give it just a few minutes. Hey guys, thanks for joining in. We're gonna go live. Waiting for Brandon. Are you in yet? Oh, there you are. Hello. How's it going? Not too bad. How about you? Can we get three people on this? I don't know. Let's see if. Uh... No. I'll get. Uh... I'll get Mr. if he can go on and see if we can both do it. I hope so, yeah, but I've never tried three before. I'm just going to pull up the, uh, the presentation that we have lined up here. <clears throat> your request. Can you request again, Rob, and see if we can. No, I don't think he can do it. Okay, I'll let him go on first, and then I'll join later. Okay, good. I will. Okay. Now, Rob, I'm going to add you on here. I'm gonna go, boom, add, good, okay. Rob should be connected here in a sec. Awesome. There he is. There's Rob, okay, perfect. Hey, we are good. I'm gonna just turn on uh, Zoom here. And that way we'll be connected there. How's it going, Rob? Hey, things are good. Things are good. How was your weekend? The weekend. Yeah, it was the weekend. Uh, it was good. Yeah. Did some cooking. Got outside a little bit. Got the nice weather happening now. What did you cook? We made, um, we made like gnocchi on Friday. Yeah risotto on Saturday and yesterday like a like Mexican chili bake kind of a thing oh nice that doesn't sound bad eating well I'm not losing weight uh yeah I think I'm like I don't know if I'm losing I'm like stress eating so <laughs> I'm working out more in stress eating so it's kind of balancing out okay okay it's balancing out it's those good gains. Sorry? Lean gains. Yeah, pretty much. I want to like come out with like a PR or two PRs at the end of this. I made the goal today, so we shall see. We shall see what's going to happen. Let's see. I believe in you. I do too. I hope I do. Let's give it a couple of minutes and then we'll, yeah, I have a goal and I think I can do it. I'm like, by the end of the pandemic, I want to hit these numbers, but I don't know how long it's going to be. So if it's like another two months, then I'm pretty confident. If it's not, then I don't know. We'll see what's going to happen with that. Yeah. Lots of unknowns. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, but we'll see. Working out in a garage is a bit different. <clears throat> not as nice i wish i could do it here actually but it's a second floor it's a nice views obviously but um 
I don't want to put a hole through the ground or like cause structural damage. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, oh, wait, we got a chat here. Password protected link again. Use the last week's link. Oh, no. I'll have to look into that. Yeah, Zoom's not. I guess like the link that I posted on Facebook may may have caused some issues, but we'll see. <laughs> I thought it would work. I thought it would work. You'll have to check that out, Rob. At the after this is over, you just have to check out uh, if that link works on Facebook or not. I will. Yeah, absolutely. Just because if I do it, I'm already logged in, so um, we'll see what happens. All right, so. Today, we will be talking about sciatica. Have you seen it, sciatica quite a bit, Rob, in practice? A ton, yeah, absolutely, lots of it. Okay. Which is good, because then we can like talk clinically about what we see and kind of how we do things and stuff like that. So I think that's a, that's a good thing, um, yeah. I've seen it quite a bit too. And I think like, I think you would agree with me. It's kind of like an umbrella term. Um, you have a lot of things that fall into sciatica, like we'll, we'll explore some causes of it, but um, essentially anything that's irritating that nerve. So that could occur from multiple sources, like whether it's the back or piriformis or an inflammatory response or whatever it is. So um, good to know like where it's coming from and it helps you with the treatment plan. Cause let's say it's coming from like your piriformis area and then you work on the back. Yes. Like you'll make the back stronger, but you might be missing the, the root cause of, of, of the sciatic pain. So is there any notes that you wanted to add before we go? No, I think you're totally right. Like, I think, um, I think it's kind of one of those, like, um, like commonly used terms that people use to describe different things as well. Yeah. Like, um, I find people will come in reporting sciatica, and sometimes, like you said, maybe it's like a, like a distal nerve irritation, like a piriformis yeah. or like kind of like the classic like nerve root presentation. But I think sometimes people even have like, um, like pain referral from other structures yeah. that can go down into like the, the glute or the leg. Or I find like some patients will even just kind of describe their back pain as being like sciatica pain. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of different areas. So. Hopefully this clears up what sciatica is with individuals that are, are watching. That was just the call that came in. Um, and then, you know, like if there's any um, unique tidbits we can add for treatments as well. So yeah, sorry. <laughs> Lots of brain farts today. Um, yeah, so we'll go into the little bit of a lecture kind of mode here and we got a few Sorry, I'll be right back right back Rob's gonna be right back okay this is all up to me now too much pressure so we got our wonderful slideshow high-tech slideshow so we have sciatica a real pain in the you know what um so with sciatica, quite a bit of pain kind of in the glute area, the buttock. So that's why I said real pain in the you know what. So this slide here kind of briefly explains sciatica. So pain radiating unilaterally, which means on one side uh, of the body from the lower back to the lower leg, foot or toes or all of them in a dermatome pattern. So we'll explain what dermatomes are in the next slides. Um, pretty much an area that the nerve innervates. So dermatome being uh, an area of skin and or you know on the body uh, that can have sensation affected so for example with sciatica a lot of people have numbness and tingling um, so that could be in a that's usually in a dermatome or pattern so you can predict or kind of map where this symptom goes so if the pain and the numbness are in the same area the same dermatome and what's called a myotome so more of the muscle innervation then you can be more confident in which nerve you can be pretty 
pretty confident the nerve is causing the issues uh, without, you know, getting imaging or, or doing any more elaborate tests. So it causes quite a bit of lower extremity pain, uh, usually worse than the low back pain itself. Uh, pain radiates below knee, so it goes past the knee. Um, can feel like an electric shock, um, so like quite a heavy jolt of pain. And you can have numbness in these areas as well, like I mentioned. Red flags, so the serious issues. If you have changes in bowel or bladder, so if you have any issues with that, it's good to get help immediately. Could be a more serious issue. Saddle anesthesia, so if you lose sensation um, and kind of in your private areas, that's a big issue. Um, and progressive worsening of symptoms. So if it's, it's getting worse and worse and worse with time, then it might be a good idea to go to the hospital or the ER or your physician. Um, yeah, so, and then you have this. So the dermatome, the kind of this area here in the red, that's where you can kind of feel pain more in the back of the leg. And uh, yeah, so that red area shows kind of where the pain is. To the right, you have causes of sciatica. So you could have a bulging disc that can cause it, uh, an inflamed joint or a muscle spasm. So kind of it being pinched or, or squeezed by a muscle. So different causes of it. Don't want to get in too much detail about this because I could probably talk about this all day. Um, this one here just shows a herniated disc right there that's pinching that nerve. <clears throat> so same thing over here. That's a herniated disc, this part here. Um, that can cause pinching of the nerve here. So nerves exit your spine on the left and right side. So if you have a herniated disc that's affecting one side, then um, you could have those, those symptoms. So disc herniation um, with nerve root compression causes about 90% of cases of sciatica. So a lot of the sciatic cases can be from uh, directly from a disc issue, from a disc herniation. Lumbar spinal stenosis may cause radicular symptoms as well. You could have piriformis syndrome or joint degeneration. So these are the their own diagnoses. So um, what happens with this is, is you, you can get sciatic from a number of different issues, right? So kind of like plantar or PFPS, like patellofemoral pain syndrome. Um, it's kind of like an umbrella term. You can have a lot of different causes of it um, with similar presentations. So it's good to know the cause. Like, is it coming from the back? Is it a disc? Um, is it coming from more of a, a muscular um, aspect? And if, if you can determine where it's coming from or what's causing it, then you can... Um, be better able to treat it, right? So, so risk factors. I mean, the biggest risk factor is having previous back pain. Um, so if you've had episodes of back pain in the past, then yes, you're more likely to get sciatic symptoms or re-injure your back. So that's kind of obvious, but it's important to note that pre-existing back pain makes you more likely to, to have back pain in the future and then sciatic in the future as well. That's shown through research. Heavy repetitive work. So if you've been working in a warehouse, labor, mechanic, things like that, and you're doing a lot of repetitive heavy work, then you're more likely to have sciatic pain, greater age. If you're a smoker, I mean, smoking could be a risk factor for everyone for any injury. Uh, and like I mentioned, previous low back injuries, mental stress, obesity, things like that, right? So more load on the body could lead to, to more episodes of sciatica. Um, yeah, so sciatic nerve is a bundle of nerves, so quite a few nerves that make, up of, make it up. So when we're looking at assessments, we assess each nerve. So the L4 nerve, again, we don't have to pull it up on an anatomical uh, like image, but the idea is the L4 nerve, uh, so the fourth level of the lumbar spine, you can get uh, numbness and tingling in the thigh and also weakness straightening out your leg. So with, with sciatica, you could have weakness in the lower extremity. Um, that's pretty common with this condition. Um, the L5 nerve, so the way we test that out is, is with extension of the foot and big toes. Um, that can, if it's weak or if it's diminished, then we can determine, hey, that's the nerve that's being affected more so than the other ones. S1, again, doing plantar flexion or her heel raises uh, would be a way to test it. So this is kind of more of the physio end. Um, and then you also have radiation of symptoms. So that numbness and tingling in these areas as well. Um, 
yeah, without pulling like a huge, <laughs> a huge figure on it. Um, so treat early is a big thing. Stay active. There's a lot of conflicting research, like research is examining what types of exercises are the best. Um, but what's shown consistently is just staying active is going to be good. Um, they look at different types of exercise programs, sometimes shows a bit of benefit, sometimes not. So what they've found is if you stay active and avoid bed rest, that's going to be the best thing. A lot of education, uh, Rob and I and, and Brandon will talk about this in a second. Stretch, roll, release. So if it's more of a muscular issue, you need to um, give it some, some feedback, right? So if it's tight, you got to release it. If it's weak, you got to strengthen it. So listen to your body when it comes to increasing activity. Um, we always kind of go through, sorry, I'm just going to flip the thing. There we go. So we always go through how to progress activity. So that could be as simple as, you know, if you feel good, just continue doing it, right? And if the symptoms increase, then slow it down or um, change what you're doing, right? So with, sorry, I'm just going to stop the screen sharing with the Zoom. Um, yeah, so if you're noticing these symptoms, right, you got numbness or pain going down back of the leg, more so past the knee, um, you could have sciatica. So the causes could be muscular, could be joint related, could be... Um, an inflammatory response, so different causes, and likely I'm just gonna get Rob back on. Continue to get, so we're gonna get Rob back. Um, and then he'll add some points to that too, because he's been listening. And we're connecting with him. Good. All right, Rob, anything to add on any of those points? <laughs> no, um, it's all sounded great. Yeah, I think like, it yeah, I think you get through kind of those like pain symptoms. Those will sometimes be like a result of inflammation or you can have kind of the decreased muscle strength and sensation that can sort of be uh, like a result of like compression and uh, um, like ischemic changes or blood flow changes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, blood flow is another one that, yeah, I, I missed as well. So. You could think of it as an umbrella term. So a lot of people say sciatica and I'm always like, well, what are your symptoms? Like, what do you think is the cause? And people are like, well, it's the pains in my lower legs. So it's got to be a lower leg issue. And often the case, no, it's coming from, from higher up or more central. So um, I think it's important to know that. So yes, you have the nerve that goes down the whole leg, but you can have symptoms anywhere along that trajectory of that nerve, right? So the big thing to remember patient wise is that, hey, your issue could be in your low back but it can cause pain down your leg. So sometimes patients come in and say, hey, it's my foot that's an issue, it's going numb. And, and then I try to educate patients as much as I can. So that whole education bit is, is huge is like, no, yes, your pain is there, but this is why it's occurring. So it's good to understand the condition. I know this is a, like a pretty brief breakdown of it, but uh, it gives you enough information to know how your body is set up mechanically, right? So. Um, the biggest bit is to avoid activity that hurts. So if bending down is causing more pain or causing more numbness, avoid bending down, right? So a lot of people do repeated back extensions. It's gonna be whatever makes it feel better, right? So you can kind of experiment with, with what makes it feel better. So um, if it's a disc herniation in a certain case, then yes, back extensions are gonna be good to do. Um, we're just having a few connection issues with the Instagram. If we can get Brandon in. <laughs> Let me add Brandon and see if that works. So just a couple seconds. There we go, Brandon's here. Anything, hey to, add, anything to add on any of that, Brandon? I missed the last little bit. Could you just update? I right, what, sir? Just your last few sentences, could you just repeat that? Oh, um, I just like uh, a lot of people go with like directional preferences for, for sciatic and stuff like that. And I just was indicating that it depends what the cause is because sometimes flexion, like bending down is going to make it worse. Extension can make it worse. So the biggest thing that I teach patients is kind of bend down, see how it feels, bend backwards, see how it feels and kind of find your own directional preference. So if it feels better bending down, then just that's going to be what you're going to prefer with your body.
Yeah, exactly. And I think you hit the nail on the head and um, any movement is good movement. And um, like you said, you got to have your body be your guide. Uh, but it's also important to explore movements that feel normal as well. Yeah, exactly. So um, I know people want to hear like specifics for injury and this could make people happy that activity is good or upset that they want like specific programming. So there are going to be exercises we're going to go through that um, everyone can do. And if someone wants to go live with us, just let me know. And then I can, if there's any physios or anyone that wants to add any information about, or if there's exercises that you do that we might not perform right now, let us know. Um, and then we can get you in and, and share your bits too. Cause there's tons of ways, like, like, like we said with physio or rehab, there's your ultimate goal, but there's so many different paths of getting there. So you could do it one of many ways. So exercise wise, like everyone has their go-tos and stuff like that. Um, Brandon has a good one that, that I know he was talking to me about earlier. Yeah. Uh, him to show that and anything else you wanted to add on as well. Yeah. So again, like Sunny said, uh, assessment wise and getting a good understanding from the physical therapist, um, kind of where it's coming from or the theory behind it. Um, that's kind of the first step because then you can start to understand, uh, well, what needs to be treated. So, uh, yeah, so let's have a, a scenario where, you know, it is caused somewhere uh, irritation muscular down the line. We'll say somewhere through that sciatic nerve. One of the common things I like to use in Rob and Sunny is, is uh, what we call a nerve glide or a nerve floss. So I'm just going to move my camera here real quick so everybody can have a better visual. All right, and let's see here. Just give me two seconds, everybody. Okay, so let's say it's my, my right side is my affected side here. And actually, I'm gonna bring us up a little bit higher here. <laughs> we got a, flossing is also important for your teeth. This is true. <laughs> this is true, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially with dentists being closed, you know. They can't, uh, they can't save us. So if everyone floss, uh, your teeth as well. Um, that's everyone. So you yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, let's say it's my right leg. Let's say where symptoms are, are coming down my, my right side here. Uh, typically what we'll try and do is with the opposite leg, uh, the left side, we'll take like an old uh, textbook and we'll put it on the ground just to give it a few inches rise. So the pelvis is kind of more neutral. So we place that on the ground there. And with the left leg, what we call a glide, um, basically um, the nerves in your body, they need to move through your fascia and muscles. Um, if they didn't, you'd be in tremendous amount of pain every time you move <laughs> yeah. in general. So they do have a natural glide uh, to those nerves itself. So typically I start with the right leg here and just like a pendulum on a, on a, well, a pendulum on a clock, I just kind of get that, that leg moving back and forth. Nice swing going for about 30 seconds or so. Um, usually I, I educate and I tell people get to the point where you feel a bit of symptoms. You don't need to get to the point where it's like 10 out of 10 or aggravating, but you should slightly feel, you know, a little bit of symptoms as you go through. The idea as you continue, it should kind of ease off as you go through that range of motion. So as I alluded to, you get two benefits. One is uh, increased range of motion, hopefully, and also hopefully a little bit of symptom control as well. Now, what you can see here is the first one, I kind of had my toes pointed up towards the ceiling. Um, usually we like to play around with having the toes inverted. So that means towards my body here. So trying to swing through that way. Sometimes we'll try an e-version, so the, the foot out to the side. Usually the general rule of thumb is where we feel a little bit of the symptoms, a little bit the most, that's the kind of way we want to swing the leg as we move through. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, that's nerve flossing. That's a good one. Yeah. Another variation. I like that one. That's one that Brandon talked about earlier and I was like, I never, never tried that one. So what's some things to keep out, look out for if it recreates the, the symptoms, Brandon? Yeah. So you, like I said, you don't want to be like getting to the point where you're going for like a minute um, or like two minutes and your whole leg is numb and you're like in 10 out of 10 pain. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably too aggressive. 
um, and you're probably causing a little bit too much irritation from that end. But remember, um, yeah, just like a pendulum, find that zone where it feels relatively okay. Yeah. You're not going to have no pain because you're going to start with some pain, I'm guessing, when you do the exercise. But it should help ease it off a bit or help with mobility as you go through. Yeah, for sure. No, those are good points. Um, and then, like, how many times a day would you want to be doing something like this? Yeah, you know what? Anytime you're, you're up, you're, you're at your kitchen counter, you know, you're walking around your house you got 30 seconds to a minute to do it, just go for it. It's, uh, it's one of those things that takes no time to do. Mm -hmm. um, and usually I, I educate patients wise, um, once you stand up, let's after sitting for a period of time, just go ahead and walk around for a few minutes, then do the exercise just to get the muscles back to um, doing what they need to do to support you standing and moving as well. Yeah, okay, that's great. That's easy enough for people to try. Anybody have any questions? You can kind of post questions about flossing. Another way to do it that some people may have seen as well. I like Brandon's way because it's a bit more dynamic and you're standing. So I prefer that. But um, another way you could do it, I'm just going to adjust the screen here. And same kind of thing as you're recreating the symptoms, right? So um, hands behind the back, right? Looking down and then straightening one leg out, right? And having the toes up. I'm going to slide back to show you my foot or bend. <laughs> Whatever, whatever recreates a little bit of that pull, right? So you want recreation of symptoms, meaning um, you're going to be a little bit numb. You might be a little bit sore, but that's not a bad thing. That means you're in the right spot, right? So let's say if you didn't have any symptoms, then maybe you're doing it incorrectly or you're not in the right area or it's not the right, like it's not the injury for the treatment, right? So, um, so same thing with flossing is kind of hands behind the back, looking down, um, away a little bit and then lifting the leg up and I, I can even feel a pull down here does that mean I have sciatica no it just means I'm not recreating any of the symptoms right so recreating yeah. the symptoms just means like whatever your sciatic symptoms are that's going to be recreating so whether it's a burning in the butt or numbness in the toes that's going to be your trigger is going to be the recreation of, of that yeah and remember uh, when, we're, when we're talking about nerve flossing and nerve glides in general, we're not talking about a problem that's caused by a central root problem. Because um, even when Sunny was demonstrating with uh, that amount of flexion and stuff, that might be quite irritating. But so we're, our theory, usually when we're, we're giving nerve glides, is more of a muscular irritation, inflammation that's causing a lot of that problem there. Yeah, and that was like that umbrella term, like we said, it could be degeneration, could be a disc issue, it could be infl an inflammatory response with the muscle. So. That kind of leads into our next one is if we want to stretch the glutes or the piriformis. Um, so if it's like piriformis syndrome, like an overactive piriformis that's causing this issue, uh, recreating it's pretty easy. You just dig a ball or something into that piriformis or butt area and then you can recreate the symptoms and you know, okay, this is likely causing, causing my sciatic symptoms or my nerve pain. So um, what I could do is I can grab a mat here and show a couple exercises okay i'm gonna let you go full screen okay okay thank you and if anybody else wanted to join in let me know so right and left so yeah you just have to hit request and you can go live especially with this physios i'm calling you out i'm gonna go down here and then i'm just gonna grab a mat and then rob if you're listening to this maybe try to just request it again we'll let's see if it works out this time so let's see we're gonna go live again with rob and see if it works out while you see my patchy legs Are you there, Rob? Can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it works out. So I was, you see the part where we're okay, okay. The, the, uh, the sciatic tensioner or the, the flossing, sorry? I did see, um, I saw Brandon's floss there, yeah. Okay, so the next part is, um, is there anything you wanted to add on firstly since we have you? Hopefully it stays connected. No, those, um, they seem perfect. Good. Any exercises from your end? 
since you're on, I'm like, I may as well just have you do it. Oh, no. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So Rob, it's like laggy. <laughs> Your lips are moving, but I can't hear you. So um, let's leave you on there. I'll show a couple exercises first just to keep things going here. Um, so back down here, like if it's a sciatic issue or even a low back issue, sorry, not a sciatic issue, piriformis issue or even like low back, uh, there's a couple things I show patients first day just to I mean, the biggest thing is, like Brandon said, is to manage the pain. And what we want to do is bring the pain levels down so we can work on more stability exercises. So what I usually do is, let's say if it's my left side, I'll get someone to lay down and I'll get them bring their left knee up and towards their opposite shoulder. So going from, so left leg going towards the right side. So kind of coming across like this. I mean, for me, I get a good pull kind of in this area. You hold for 30 seconds. Do that a few times, right? And then switch sides. Still do the other side, no matter what. Even if it's not causing any issue, just make sure you, you do both sides. Hold them for 30 seconds. Another good one to do is, a little bit more cueing with this one is, is I get people to lay on their back, legs straight, and I'll show you the opposite. exercise for the low back and the core. Um, yeah, we've done the bird dog and dead bug in the past. I can show you that as well next up um, in a few minutes. And yeah, so you wanna mobilize the area, get things moving as it should, get the symptoms managed. Um, yeah, and then kind of go from there and then start strengthening it. So we have two kind of things that go on is centralization and peripheralization. So when you first get injured, you can think of it as peripheralization. So the pain's going out, you got pain in a big, big area. As the pain in the weeks to come when you get treated kind of converges into a smaller area, that would be centralization. So that would mean that you're healing. So the pain level, for instance, can be the same amount, but in a smaller area, we would still say that's significant. That's very important to, to keep in mind because um, you're getting better. So if you find your pain's getting to a smaller, smaller, smaller area, that's a good thing. That's, you should, use that as encouragement and keep doing your exercises. A lot of the times what happens is um, clients or individuals might do things and as soon as they like, you know, 80%, they're okay, I'm done. Um, 
I, I'm not going to do that much more activity. And then you can start noticing symptoms returning and you don't want that to happen, right? So when you're getting better, use that as, as reinforcement and keep doing your exercise um, programs and things like that. So regain and prospers in the house, Arne. Actually, if you're there, Arne, uh, request to go live with me or with us. We can, if you want, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but I think it's good for, for clinics to link together in physio. So if there's any physios that want to, or any practitioners or patients or whoever it might be, um, let us know if you want to, to say anything. If you want to type in a question, you can, or you can request to, to go live with us. Hey, I might have a comment about flossing for the teeth. <laughs> as opposed to nerve flossing. Um, let's see here. There we go. So we're going live with somebody I haven't seen in a while. So this is kind of exciting. Hey, Arne. Hey, guys. What's going on? Long time no see. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. How are you doing? Good, good. Not too bad, eh? This is crazy. So Renee and I went to school together. We were in the same grad class. So for everyone who's logged into this, uh, meet Renee, because your, your clinic, Regain and Prosper, that's in um, um, suit. What's the town again? I always forget. The military. In, yeah, in, in Wainwright. Wainwright, yes. I know the military trains a lot there and stuff. So you probably see a lot of military there, eh? You bet, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So how's there, how are things? <laughs> good, very, very different here, but uh, yeah. it's good town's very slow but no it's good that's good well yeah it's tough it's tough everywhere it's good to have you thanks for i i hope i didn't call you out to be like hey come on no worries no i'll just sit on. in and if there's anything to add i'll i'll watch if that's okay yeah so we talked about actually we talked about sciatica how it's i'll give you a brief breakdown and that way it kind of uh gives everyone a recap so we talked about sciatica how it's kind of like an umbrella term it can happen from inflammation a muscle issue a joint issue it can happen from like a herniated disc so you get a lot of causes of it um, and then Brandon, who you know as well, you graduated with, uh, mentioned some things about some flossing, so some nerve tensioners. Um, I showed some like release through your piriformis, if it's from like piriformis syndrome. Um, so doing some ball release, did some stretches, kind of going into some more core. So like I, I was discussing if it's a herniated disc, that area is relatively unstable. So going over some core exercise, so if you have anything to add. No, I'd say that's kind of the the basics of it. So you guys have touched kind of the main reasons as to, as to why it exists. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's always a sciatic nerve like you touched on. A lot of times it is just more inflammation, I find. Yeah. And, um, and a lot of times people also think it could be a herniated disc. And again, usually may not be the case. So um, sometimes you don't need to get scared. You just need to see someone or really just start some stretching. Usually it's just tightness or irritation and as you loosen their certain areas up or do some strengthening, it usually gets better within a week or two. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I was looking at a lot of the articles and stuff and research shows. Like it's hard to, to pinpoint like an exact exercise program because it's, there's so many different causes So research can't really label, Hey, this is the go-to thing to do. It just shows to stay active and avoid things that hurt, which make a lot of sense. But yeah. a lot of the times that doesn't translate into practice. Cause even me, if I'm like doing some lifting, I'll be like, oh, that, the back pain's not that bad, and then ignore it, and then the next day you can't really do much, right? So yeah. um, I know you probably see that quite a bit too, where people just aren't listening to their symptoms. Yeah. Uh, I find this is an area, that, like, like with a lot of injuries, if you just manage it very quickly, it doesn't usually develop into a bad issue. I find a lot of people that have sciatica are like, they come in, and they're like, hey, I've had two or three years of these symptoms. Um, what do I do? So then it's a bit more, it's more difficult to find the cause because there's so many areas that might be inflamed or they're so sensitized uh, versus like someone who just comes in a week of pain and it's a bit easier to kind of say, this is coming from the back, this is from the piriformis, this might be the yeah. case and stuff. So um, yeah, any exercises? Like what's your go-to core exercises for this? Um, usually I like, like the dead bug. So yeah. basically I do a little bit more bracing things. So just laying on your back and then kind of activating your core. 
Yeah. So the dead bug exercises, one I usually go to start very, very easy, very simple, just kind of activating and then adding in the arms and legs. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not really set up to show it, but if you guys I can, you can, I can show it. it. Um, I can yeah, that's, that's one I like. And then like planking, um, um, those are always good too. But the biggest thing is making sure you're activating your core properly. So do the dead bug. You can do your arms first, so like I, you probably tell people to push their back down towards the mat, right? Yeah, you bet. Yeah, so getting hands up, legs up, so like hips are 90 degrees, legs 90 degrees, arms are up. And usually when I start with it, like someone hasn't done it before, I'll just do the arms while they can maintain, you know, activating their core and pushing down on the mat. Progression would be going down with the leg, back up, and alternating. And then another progression would be doing opposite arm to leg. So right arm to left leg. You can't really see my arm, but it's going back. And then the other ones, right? So just like that. Yeah, that's perfect. And the biggest thing I cue people is just to make sure, don't go to that advanced version if you find you're cheating or your back's arching. Even yeah. like high level athletes, I find sometimes actually can't, can't brace good enough. They're very strong but their core strength is actually pretty weak. They can do a lot of sit-ups, but when they have to brace with either yeah. lifting or uh, even just laying on their back, they're actually really weak or they've, they've learned to cheat. Same with doing the plank. If you kind of cue them, you can actually tell they're cheating a lot. And if they, you make them do it right, then they uh, actually collapse or they can't hold it. So sometimes don't go the hardest version first just because you think you're strong. Rather, master the easy ones. Make sure your activation's good before you move ahead. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Start, uh, start easy, so to speak, and then progress as, as you can, like even doing a lot of those bracing things with like cables or wood chops and things like that. Um, I'll do those as well. So once yeah. people can do like the advanced bird dog, dead bug kind of stuff, then I just be like, okay, just go continue that stuff. And that's kind of like discharge planning. So. Yeah. And did you guys touch on like hips? Um, like just opening up the hips and stuff like that, like hip stretching. That's the other big thing I find. A lot of people with like yeah. hypermobile hips or again, stiff back, stiff hips. Usually those are big indicators too. I, I find yeah. um, stretching. Yeah. Yeah. I did some like glute stretches and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah you're right. That's, that's an area that's an issue, which is good because Wednesday you should attend um, yeah. Yeah, because we have good. squatting patterns and things like that. So tight yeah. hips and affecting squats. So Okay. I treat a lot of like weightlifters and Olympic lifters and stuff. And a lot right. of questions are like, Hey, how do I know it's a hips tight or how do I know it's an issue? So we're going to go over some stuff for that. So you can definitely attend that and see what, see what you think. It'd be great to get your opinion. For sure. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I'll, maybe I'll pop in on that one. That'd be great to sit in on as well. Yeah, for sure. We all have like more spare time on our hands. So yeah, <laughs> well, I do at least, but yeah. Um, but making these sometimes can be a bit tedious. Like we had a recovery one last week. Um, and that, that was a lot more research I thought than, than I thought I would yeah. do. Like it was, it was very interesting. I kind of get lost. So I'll like look up stuff and then three hours go by. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh, I should have actually done some work. So, um, so yeah. And then check us out. So I was going to let you know, and everyone else like on YouTube, we have like pursuit of motion physio YouTube channel. So we actually, I started uploading all these videos on YouTube as well. So okay. we save these up and then if people want to use them as a resource or just, you know, they want to learn more about something and they got some time on their hands, it's a good idea to, to look at. So I'll make posts about it this week too. <laughs> okay, perfect. And if you ever want to do a topic together, let me know. It'd be good to like collaborate. Sure. Yeah, I'll send you an email. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, great. buddy. Yeah. yeah, I'll pop off here. I'll just listen. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye, buddy. Yeah, which is pretty wild. So doing this stuff is cool because we get to connect with other physios and other professionals. But RNA that you just saw there, um, way over in Wainwright has a clinic and we went to school together. So it was actually kind of, it's kind of cool getting to this point in the career where you see a lot of colleagues and, and friends kind of move up in their profession, um, open up clinics, become like clinic managers, whatever it might be. Um, it's really neat because you get to connect and, 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 and say hi to each other and learn some stuff too. So yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to say about sciatica. Hopefully that that answers some questions. I want to thank Rob and Brandon for, for mentioning uh, their tidbits as well. I'm um, sorry to Rob again for, <laughs> for 
for the connection issues. Um, we'll, we'll try to resolve that because I want Rob to, to be in, in quite a few of these talks um, as we're a team and it's important to stay a team. So if anybody has any questions, we'll give it a couple minutes um, and just type in your questions or just request to go live. We can talk. Uh, we still have like 15 minutes or up to 15 minutes. Um, yeah. Oh, no, don't be sorry, Rob. It's not your fault. <laughs> it's the internet's fault. Tell us or something like that. So uh, who else is in here? Who can I? Great talk, though. Thank you. Hopefully that answers some questions. Like we, we as physios think and talk about sciatica all the time. So the goal of this is to make it easy to understand for any potential um, individuals that have sciatica or even for physios, like, you know, a good refresher, if you want to call it, or um, yeah, we always want to talk back and forth and see if people have any questions or any, any comments, because there might be a better way for us to do things. So we want to learn about uh, any go-tos. If you is still on, what kind of stuff do you work on? Anything we missed? What kind of things do you work on for sciatica? Like, do you do flossing? Do you do strengthening? Do you use a combined approach? What do you do? We'll give it a couple minutes. So. I know Amy asked a question um, initially about sciatica. So sorry, it took a little while to, <laughs> to make a post. Um, yeah, and this week we have, we have the squatting on Wednesday. Tomorrow we have headaches. Um, so if you have any headaches, ever had any headaches or treat headaches, uh, it would be good to, to attend that. We'll talk about different types of headaches and treatment plans. I'll tie in a little bit of TMJ or TMD issues with it. Um, yeah, and then we have a colleague of mine, Megan, who's going to come in and talk about postpartum exercise and activity and what, why, why we need to be doing more of that. Well, not we, but <laughs> why the, uh, the office of sex needs to do that and keep active. Um, and what else do we have? We are running again, so running rehab with Rob. Um, yeah, so we'll see with those topics. And if there's any more topics that you guys want us to discuss, we can do that as well. Um, yeah, we'll give it a couple more minutes for any questions. And if not, we'll, we'll end it. I'll talk about my plans for the rest of the day. Uh, <laughs> nothing much actually, probably some more research for the rest of this week's talks and then next week, and then probably get in some physical activity myself. So I'm fortunate enough to still have a decent setup here um, and in the garage as well. So do some workout. I wanted to get into baking, but I'm glad I don't have a lot of the supplies because <laughs> I'd probably put on a lot of weight. Um, yeah, Rob, Rob does, Rob's doing a lot of baking. So it's kind of nice to, to see. And then even like looking on Instagram and social media and stuff like that, it's cool to see how people are doing like new hobbies and stuff like that. They're cooking more like it's, 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 there are some positives with this, you know, terrible situation, but um, so yeah, let us know what kind of hobbies you do. I had a friend who's doing some crochet work um, and it looks amazing already. So yeah, I don't want to take too much time. Hopefully that wasn't <laughs> just killing time. So I don't see any more questions. Um, yeah, hopefully that just meant that we did a good job answering any questions before they came. So. If you want to ask us uh, questions after this, just give us a direct message. Um, yeah, either on Facebook or Instagram or my emails, our clinic emails, info at pursuitemotion.com. Um, and then also check out on YouTube, we have our Pursuit of Motion physio channel as well, which I'll post in our uh, profile as well. So yeah, make sure you guys check it out and thanks for tuning in and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out guys.